Welcome to the 2022 Antigua Forum, hosted by the Universidad Francisco Marroquin, a free market university here in Guatemala. Today we are with Marcel Van Hattem, a journalist, political scientist, and politician. Currently, he is a member of the Chamber of Deputies, the lower house of Congress in Brazil. And he's vice leader of the political party, Partido Nuvo. Uh, welcome, Marcel. Thank you, Francisco. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's great to be with you. Um, well, Marcel, you were first elected to public office as a city council member at the age of 18 years old. Today, you serve in Congress in Brazil. Uh, tell us why you first ran for um, public office and why you continue to serve in public office today. Well, my parents thought I was uh, crazy or something because <laughs> they're not related to politics. My father's a civil engineer, my mother's an architect, so and, and uh, small entrepreneurs. Um, but uh, I sensed at a very young age that it was important to have people who fight the state, bureaucracy, uh, and so on. So this is why I started uh, early on. I was just 17 when I affiliated myself to a political party, which is necessary in Brazil. You have to be affiliated to a political party, become a member to run. And I ran for the city council. So, um, And also because I was, a, I was a journalist at the time. So I covered the city council the uh, the uh, gatherings that that happened every Monday and I thought that uh, you know I could maybe also uh, collaborate with my community and what was the journey from being in city council to being in uh, Congress well first I was city council then I I decided to uh, run for the state legislature twice in 2006 and 2010 but all changed again in 2013. We had protests against the government at the time, and many friends of mine and uh, previous supporters in my political campaign say, hey, Marcel, maybe you should uh, give it another shot. And we had a very good result. By only 351 votes, and in 2018, I ran as a candidate for the federal uh, house, this time at Partido Novo. So it was a choice also that I made. Uh, at the eyes of many people, difficult choice because I was not in a traditional party, very small party, libertarian party in the positions uh, in favor of free market, uh, um, defense of the individual. And yet I got 350,000 votes. I was the most voted candidate in my state, Rio Grande do Sul. Yeah, quite a journey, quite a journey. Well, um, so uh, in addition to that, I understand you started your career as a newspaper delivery man and also as a reporter for a Brazilian newspaper. Uh, why did you first uh, get involved uh, in those roles and what do you see as the proper role of the free press? The first uh, um, job I had outside family jobs was uh, at, at, at the newspaper, the local newspaper. I was a paper boy and was, I was really happy with it. it. was at the end of the day, I delivered the paper, talked with people and I always liked that, that kind of things. And, and, in 2000, well, when I was actually 16 years, I was going to the United States for a robotics competition. And at the time, I told the, uh, the owner of the newspaper that was going to the United States and maybe he would be interested in receiving some text from there, some stories about American way of life, what was going on there. So. He accepted the, 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 the idea. Uh, I sent some text, of course, it was completely voluntary. Uh, uh, I, I did it voluntarily. But when I returned, he said that everybody liked the text, so he hired me as a, as a reporter at the local newspaper. And I think free press is, is, is completely uh, fundamental for democracy. As a journalist, I advocate for free press. I advocate for the freedom of expression, freedom of opinion and also that the press could be as more neutral as possible because when we see that there's too much, especially in stories, right? Uh, not, not in op-eds because that's a whole different story, but especially in stories or in reporting, I think journalists should keep their eyes on the truth uh, no matter if it will hurt somebody, should keep their uh, job always this way. Well, uh, speaking of writing, uh, you're the author of two books. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the subject matter of those books and how the message has been received? Sure. Well, the first book is, is actually a, a, a collection of some of my speeches I gave in the, in the, in the state legislature. Uh, 
is a sort of a, a, a legacy from my mandate, let's put it that way, a, a humble legacy, I would say, but it's very good to have something out that people can read later and, and, and see a little bit about my own uh, biography and the, the authors I like, because I cite many times Mises and Bastiat and, and, and Friedman and also other uh, uh, classic liberal and libertarian thinkers. And my second book just came out now. It's a, a, I wrote in, in a partnership with uh, Thiago Albers. He's a theologian. We are both Lutherans. And the title of the book is very com uh, provocative. Is um, oh, by the way, the first book its name is Somos Nós Com Uma Voz. This is us with one voice. So it's like, that's why the speeches, right, are connecting to somebody expressing other people's opinion, people who I represented during my state legislature uh, term. But uh, the second book has a provocative title, which is, uh, Is Politics a Devil's Thing? And uh, we try to put in perspective how politics is played in biblical times since uh, ancient times, since uh, the first books of the Bible, and how uh, it developed throughout uh, the uh, Christianity's history, and what is the importance of politics in, 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 in today's Christian's life. Yeah, so you, you alluded uh, before in, in your books that you have some of these uh, speeches that you've given in, in uh, Congress and the legislature, um, and in a really captivating speech in Brazil, uh, your answer, and perhaps the big line at the end of the speech was, I don't want to live in another country, I want to live in another Brazil. Um, what has been happening in Brazil during the course of your lifetime, and what are some of the solutions you propose for a free and prosperous Brazil? Well, sure. Well, this speech was given at the state legislature uh, the, uh, in, in Rio Grande do Sul, but I'm sure it got everywhere uh, uh, soon afterwards because it was uh, really a hit. I said something that many people wanted to hear and wanted to express because actually we don't want to live in another country. We want to make our countries a better place to live. Uh, so I didn't want to live in, an, in, in, in another country. I want to live in another Brazil. That was the, the bottom line of my speech and is the bottom line of my uh, uh, activities now in the Brazilian Congress. And in order to accomplish that, we have to give people more freedom. We have to limit the state we have to give the example. Well, Marcel, thank you for being here at the Antigua Forum, and we hope to see you back here in the future. I hope to see you too in the future. Again, Francisco, it was a pleasure to meet you, a pleasure to meet so many uh, nice people around here. Congratulations for what you have done too, and uh, well, I hope to see you next year.